Hi, I'm Juliana McMillan Rahoy, and today I'm going to be talking to you about five ways to amp up your networking as a GIS or a data professional. I am an extreme introvert. When I tell this to people, they are always so shocked because I don't come across that way. I host really large networking events in which people from all over the world come. But you know what? Networking has not been something that's always been super easy for me. It's only been in the last couple of years as I started my own business and also just wanted to understand people and the way that they live and the way that they work better that I've really gotten into networking. So here are the five tips that we're going to be talking through today. The first is to show up. The second is to follow up. The third is to reach out. The fourth is to not to underestimate the value of your current organization. And the fifth is to fill the tank. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing is to just show up. Right now, uh, in this virtual world, there are so many great online networking events. And I'm pretty confident that the number of online networking events is actually going to continue into the future. People have really found that there's value in online networking events. They're really low cost. They are easy to connect with other people. And so there's really no excuse for you to not be showing up at online networking events. If you're not sure where you can find them, you can search Twitter using GIS chat, data chat, uh, some of those things you can search for them on LinkedIn, uh, or you can reach out to me and ask and say, hey, I'm interested in attending networking events. There are so many events that are out there. And so once you find an event, the next thing I'd recommend is to be fully present. When you are talking with someone or when you're just in an event to learn, um, it's always the most respectful and the best if you are just fully there. Um, block off your calendar, turn off your phone, be there for the full hour, and that's the way that you're gonna get the most out of this. Um, and also the thing that I would recommend is for you to come with something to talk about. So in my Mappy Hour events, how they happen is we have a presentation at the beginning, uh, either by me or someone else from the geospatial community talking about something related to data or career progression. And then you go into networking rooms. You can either talk about the presentation or you can talk about something else. But one thing that I found that leads to the best networking is when people come prepared with something to talk about. So for you, that could be something as simple as, Hey, I read this article. I thought that this was really interesting. Uh, can we talk about this? Or, um, hey, I did this really cool analysis that I really wanna talk about. Can I share it? Now, bringing something to, to the table is also really great because that then leads into our second point, follow up, right? So say you uh, bring a really interesting article, uh, such as like the, a really interesting article that I just read about deep fakes in satellite imagery. So we're at this networking event. We then talk about that, that article that you bring up and we have a discussion about it. Then you can follow up with the people who you talked with and say, hey, I just wanted to follow up. I had such a great time meeting with you. I wanna just follow up and send you a copy of the article and would love to know your thoughts on this, right? It's really simple, but that's a way to then forge that connection and to, to build that relationship with someone. Or if you are um, just connecting with people on LinkedIn, it's always great if you can just type a message and say, hey, we met at Mappy Hour, we met at this event, uh, we talked about this or this other thing, because you can have so many LinkedIn connections and it can sometimes be confusing in terms of how you know someone. And so just having that message that you then have that message trail for can also be a really great way to build a connection. Um, I also recently did post an article on my website about affordable emails. So affordable email really quickly is an email that you have that's a template that really quickly explains who you are and the value that you add, as well as what you're looking for in a networking situation. So say you meet someone at a Mappy Hour who works for Acme Corporation, and you would really like to get to know people at Acme Corporation, um, you could send them this email and then ask them to forward it on to their colleagues to just have an opportunity to talk to them. Or if you're interested in GIS or social justice, you know, they could forward it on to people within their their um, their contacts uh, to set up a time to talk with you as well. Uh, but also just respect the time of other people when you come with a request for time. And the next thing that I would recommend is to reach out. So, um, and this is not just like at a networking event, this is more broad, is to not be afraid to reach out and to say, hey, 
I've noticed you online or we went to a networking event. I really liked what you had to say. Would you be willing to get a virtual coffee with me? I have had some really fruitful relationships be built over the past year because I just reached out to people and said, hey, I would like to get to know you a little bit more. I'd love to, you know, no agenda, just talk to you. And now I have some really great connections, which are more than just online connections. Um, and so all it took was me being bold and asking somebody out to a virtual coffee. Um, something that is also really important is to not be afraid to network with your current peers. So it can be really easy to say that you want to um, connect with somebody who's like years ahead of you and which I totally, I've benefited so much from that, from, from people doing sort of one-off mentoring sessions with me, but to also not be afraid to talk to you know, people to, to network with people who are at your level. Those are the people who you're going to be advancing through your career with. And so building really solid foundations with entry level people may seem a little counterintuitive, but that's actually a really great way for you to build a fantastic network for you to rely on in 10, 20, 30 years um, by having, by being really well known and by knowing people who are at your level. Um, also, if you do reach out to somebody you don't really know, um, explain why you think it's a really great idea for you to have a chat. Um, I really like talking to people, and but sometimes I just get sort of out of the blue requests that provide no context. It's sort of like, hey, I'd like to chat with you. And I tend to just be like, mm, I don't know if I necessarily have time for this because I don't know them and there's really no context provided in terms of what's gonna happen. Is this gonna be a sales call? Are you looking to hire me? Are like what's going on here? So make it make your ask really clear when you uh, when you reach out. But don't be afraid to reach out, and also don't be discouraged if somebody says no. There's plenty of other people out there to do networking with, and so just keep going. Uh, the other thing I want to say is to not underestimate the value of your current organization. That's thing number four. Whether you are still in school or you work for a really big company or even a small company, don't underestimate the value of building relationships and connecting and networking with the people who you work with. So this past year, I did long-term contract work with two different organizations that were both on the smaller side, under 200 people-ish. And one thing that I worked really hard at uh, within the role that I had was getting to know people across the organization. So these weren't people who were doing GIS things. They were people who did other things for the company. And But it was really important to be able to understand their point of view, their perspective, what they did, so that I could also say, oh, you know what, you have that problem. GIS or data analysis can really step in and really help solve that problem. So it was a way for me to then integrate myself within that organization. But I also worked for the Department of Defense in the US for a number of years, and that's a huge organization. So within the Department of Defense and outside of the Department of Defense, or just like within my inside and outside of that organization, was also really helpful for me to be able to get access to the data that I needed, understanding how things worked, getting um, just learning about the, the environment and the R&D that was happening. So don't underestimate the value of just saying, I really wanna network within my own organization. So I personally uh, have a nine to five job right now. And one of my goals that I'm being held to in my annual performance review that I set is that I am doing a monthly coffee chat with somebody who works in a different part of my company. These are going to be people who work within the world of data. So people who may be useful to me uh, in terms of the role that I have, but also just so I can understand the work that's being done. So I'd really encourage you to set a goal like that. And then the fifth thing that I would recommend you do is that you fill the tank or fill the bucket, whatever phrase you want to use. And what this refers to is that you know, time is a really valuable resource. I love investing and taking time uh, into, into other people. But one thing that I don't super like is both when somebody sends me a request to network that I don't have any context for and I don't understand what the ask is. So be very clear so you're being respectful of my time um, and that makes me personally more likely to be willing to, to, to want to network with you. But the other thing is to also just engage, right? So if, if it's on YouTube, on LinkedIn, on Instagram, on Twitter, engage with the content of that person and so they may have an idea about who you are, uh, then they're also going to be a lot more willing to um, to invest in you and to, to want to have a conversation with you. But one thing that I've also done in the 
I, in the past few months that I have really enjoyed doing is to help fill the tank by buying people coffee. So I, when I ask somebody if we can chat, I say, hey, uh, I would love to get you a gift card to your favorite local independent coffee shop as a thank you for spending time talking with me. That's a really small gesture, but it both shows people that I'm serious about this and I respect their time. And it's just, a, I'm not like buying their time, but I'm just helping to, to compensate and to show that there is value uh, that, that I see that there's value and that they, are, that they are adding value to my life. So I think that networking is such a great thing. Uh, my life has been changed by networking in terms of really great opportunities that I've been given. So here are five things for you to do as you think about networking in this online digital time. The first is to show up, go to events. Second, follow up after those events. Third, reach out and not be afraid to reach out. Fourth, don't estimate the power of networking in your own organization. And fifth, fill the tank. I'd love to, for you to like and subscribe this to be able to get additional content on how to map your own GIS future. Please let me know in the comments below which of these you think you are going to implement first. I hope to see you at an upcoming Mappy Hour.